Hey, UConn Nation, it's KK Arnold here. If you're looking for the latest UConn women's basketball content, go subscribe to Listen Up to Phil and Ryan. Go Huskies! Welcome back, Phil and Ryan on Listen Up to first year of the new year, 2024. Hope everybody had a great New Year's Eve. Watch the ball drop. Hope everybody's starting the year good. A uh, couple, couple updates before we get into this Creighton for the last check-in as the Huskies travel to Omaha to face another team in the top 25. A couple updates. Aaliyah Edwards, Big East Player of the Year. Uh, excuse me, not, not Big East Player of the Year yet. Big East Player of the Week for this past week after posting yet another double-double in Sunday's win over Marquette. It was actually her fifth double-double in the past six games for the UConn Huskies. K.K. Arnold earned her fourth freshman of the week nod this season. Huskies freshman class has been absolutely dominating that award uh, so far this year. And UConn also moved up three spots in number 12 in the AP poll. And now, like I said, UConn travels to Omaha to play number 21 Creighton on Wednesday. I would say the Blue Jays are a pretty similar team to 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 the Marquette Golden Eagles team with a lot of experience includes some outstanding seniors starting forward Emma Ronsick, guard Lauren Jensen, forward, uh, forward Morgan Molly, uh, guard Molly Majensen, forward Mal Mallory Blake. The list just keeps going on and on for the Creighton Blue Jays. Also slim similar to Marquette in terms of size, which could also benefit UConn considering the, the rebounding battle. UConn did a pretty good job against Marquette. Hopefully they do another pretty good job against Creighton in this game. I always look forward to the matchups inside. Looking forward to seeing this one between Emma Ronsick and Aaliyah Ed Edwards battling inside. Creighton, they're kind of a team that, that likes to shoot the three ball most of the time. Bench players Kennedy Townsend, Kiana Lockett, and, and Janie Horan. All the three-point threats, including most of the starters for this Blue Jays team. We haven't really seen UConn play a road game in quite a while, so it should be interesting to see how UConn starts this game on the road um, to see what their energy is, their mindset going into the new year, and hopefully they can kind of take control of the game pretty early and finish the game strong like we've seen uh, in these recent past couple games like they've been doing at home. All right, yes, yeah, some very familiar names, Ryan, and uh, it's a pleasure to be back with you. A brand new year. You are right about that on this Wednesday, a beautiful – or, excuse me, Tuesday. See, I'm already losing track of days, Ryan. Uh, that's what the new year does, the holidays. It, it leaves you with a long hangover, but I promise I'll do my best today with you. Oh, uh, yeah, a lot of familiar names. Uh, another Big East test, you know, Um I, I really made a bold statement. I was kind of nervous when I made my prediction, and we'll have predictions, obviously, again at the end of this video. When I made my prediction against Marquette in the last check-in, I, I thought about it, and after the video, I'm like, wow, Ryan, did I say 90 points? So UConn even scored higher than 90 points. So, again, though, this is a test. Don't get me wrong for UConn, um, but I believe they will be ready, obviously. They will handle things um, just fine. And again, a lot of familiar names on the Creighton Blue Jays roster. And if I'm looking at this right, the last uh, game between these two, it looks like a 62 to 60 UConn victory. Um, so if that is correct, Ryan, and I believe that was Caroline Ducharme's uh, return in that game after missing 13 games with a concussion, if you remember that, all the way back in February of 23. So almost a year ago. Um, and then the first matchup, though, of last season, it looks like that they defeated, uh, looks like UConn uh, defeated Creighton 72 to 47. So kind of some adjustments, you know, I, I'm going to go ahead and tell you and everybody else now, I don't think we, we have, that we announced this, um, no last check-ins for the second time that UConn faces a Big East opponent. Um, yeah. So there, Ryan, you had that on the table. So, but again, very important, let's not, Let's not get it uh, get it wrong here because we know just as much as important as the first matchup is, it's important. The second matchup is just that much more important, right, Ryan? Because what's your take now when you look at last season, obviously brand new season, and I would say UConn totally a lot more healthier, some a lot more star players maybe than last season. Now, Dorka uh Lou Lopez, Senechal, I get it. They had a lot of fresh talent on that roster, but – Look at the freshman, Ryan, this year. And 
Again, I pointed out KK Arnold, Ashlyn Shade. I forgot to mention Shade in the last video. Yes, she stepped up big time. Caden Samuels. So, again, overall, no disrespect to last season's roster. I think that it's just a little bit more much better, Ryan. I, I think you would agree. Um, so what's your take, Ryan? Although this is the first time facing Creighton, it looks like the UConn only won by two in the last matchup. So is, is it kind of like, you know, you're talking about football here with me, a game of adjustments? Yeah, I think it's interesting, you know, e even though we're not doing the last check-in for when, when UConn plays the, the all these Big East teams for the second time. It is interesting when you talk about adjustments since these Big East teams play each other so many years in a row now that UConn has returned to the Big East for the past couple of years. So it, it is interesting in, in that aspect of how, how often these teams play each other, and especially with, with Marquette, how how many familiar faces they had on their team. And looking at this Creighton roster, like I was going through uh, some a lot of familiar faces, so many five-year players, their whole starting uh, starting five are, are seniors, five-year players. So uh, UConn you know, ha has played these players a lot of times. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it should be interesting going to Omaha and seeing what kind of adjustments Creighton can make in terms of sizing up with UConn uh, after losing a couple of players and like you were mentioning the freshman class uh trying to match up with them as well but uh, i i think the the battle inside for the rebounds is always an interesting test for the yukon team i think they've been doing a pretty good job recently dealing with the smaller lineup so um you know with with how good yukon's rolling right now there's not honestly a, a lot of concerns, even though it, it is a road game, but uh, it, it's going to be interesting to see how Creighton, if they make any adjustments to this UConn team. But um, I don't know how much it'll matter with, with how good UConn's playing right now. Yes, sir. Again, Ryan, you know what it's about. And Aliyah Edwards in that uh, first game, a uh, first matchup last season, had 23 points shined, like always, right? She is a a baller out there. And I look forward to seeing Aaliyah Edwards, not only Aaliyah Edwards, but um, again, she has been, if you ask me, improving just a little bit down below there. So I look for her to have another big game in this Big East matchup, Ryan, against the Creighton Blue Jays. Let's get down on into comments very quickly. And then predictions, let's go over to Marcia Clark. What a way to start 2024. Huskies played a great game. The freshman trio of Shade, KK, and Samuels has been a blessing. Griffin continues to be a game changer, and Paige and Edwards continue to ball. What will 2024 have in stores, pun intended, Ryan, for this team? The sky is the limit. Yeah, I think the sky really is the limit for this team, and, and it didn't really seem like that to begin to begin the, the season, but to end the year, it, it certainly does appear that way. And, and I think, like you kind of said, a lot of players have just been stepping up like I said, Aaliyah Edwards posting all these double doubles has been a tremendous help to the team. She's really gotten going down below inside the paint. Uh, Paige, Paige Becker is stepping up with her defensive skills and really showing them off like we've never seen before. All the fr freshmen keep pitching in. Uh, Aubrey's been playing great off the bench and and you know, just providing help in the team, however she has. So a lot of players just stepping up in so many ways and really developing into their own roles. Nika's been uh, getting her groove kind of back back in the, these recent past couple of games. So like I said, really the, the team's just rolling on all cylinders right now. So it definitely should be fun to watch them as we start 2024. All right, Colleen Ziemba goes, Notre Dame doesn't play South Carolina this year. LSU does. Well, I believe she might have been misunderstanding, Ryan. I was talking about the games between Notre Dame and UConn and South Carolina and UConn. So, obviously, people even – you have to believe probably everyone that's not UConn fans are licking their chops for those games because, you know, they're just waiting, Ryan. They're like, yeah, UConn's going to lose. I can hear them now, right? UConn's going to lose. They're going to have trouble. They're going to get exposed. Uh-uh, I don't think so, man. This is the wrong time of the year to deal with the Huskies, if you ask me, Ryan. Let's go over one more. How about there are a lot of people who would love to see Geno slip, as to what I just said, Ryan, to the back burner in women's basketball. Those same people are probably disappointed to see how well this team is beginning to mesh. I think having Paige in the four spot is a genius move. She can post up 
about as well as anyone, and this short lineup creates a situation where they are too quick down low. If opponents try to zone UConn, their shooting will kill teams from the outside. Interesting to hear Gino after the game say no Big East team will go undefeated this year. Yeah, I, I think it, it's it's kind of interesting to see how teams match up and play UConn because you would think it'd be easier since they are so small, but it, it actually poses uh, quite a challenge as we've seen in these these recent games trying to match up with UConn and just how, how good they're doing uh, doing meshing like they just said with, with this lineup that that they've been given, but. I think, you know, that goes along with how the Big East, what Gino said, how every team's been been improving these past couple of years. So definitely not expecting anybody to go undefeated, undefeated in Big East play either. But uh, it's definitely still possible from UConn, but still a lot of tough, tough Big East opponents still yet to come. All right. Well, it's going to be a challenge, too, then, Ryan, according to this person. Uh, if UConn doesn't sweep the Big East, I guess we'll have to figure out which Big East game, Ryan, that they're going to lose. But it sure as heck ain't going to be this one, huh? Not in my prediction. I'm going UConn, Ryan, 86-69. UConn all over Creighton. Yeah, like I said, UConn's just rolling right now, and I don't think there's many teams that can – beat them right now i think uconn keeps their win streak going i'm gonna say they take take down creighton 88 to 71 all right ryan i'll see you tomorrow looking forward to it right back here on listen up it's uconn on the road 12 and 21 ryan thank you a lot and again a very happy new year phil and ryan listen up